Hey there, champions. Welcome back to another Read Aloud. We're back with Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. We're on chapter eight, part two. And chapter eight is called The TV Star. I did lose my voice. I'm getting it back. So I apologize for the um, weird voice and I might lose it halfway through, but <clears throat> and you might hear a lot of that. So I apologize ahead of time. And that's why I haven't read for the last few nights, but we're back. So part two, chapter eight. <clears throat> my father said, Janet, the boys are going to be here for the morning. Can you amuse them while I clear up some work? Certainly, Mr. Hatcher, Janet said. You go ahead into your office and I'll take the boys on a tour of the rest of the agency. As soon as my father went into his private office, Janet took out her pocketbook. She reached in and came up with a hairbrush, some lipstick, and a bag of crackers. Want some? She asked me and Fudge. Okay, I said, taking a handful. Fudge did the same. The crackers were shaped like little goldfish. I nibbled while Janet fixed herself up. She had a big folding mirror in her desk drawer. She set it on top of her desk and went to work on herself. When she was finished, she looked exactly the same as when she came in. But I guess she didn't think so because she said, that's much better. Then she put all her stuff away and took me by one hand and Fudge by the other. We walked down a long hall through a doorway and into another section of the agency. We came to a room where there were a bunch of kids with their mothers. I guess there were at least 50 of them. Most of the kids were kind of small, like fudge. Some were crying. Is this a nursery school or what? I asked. She laughed. They're here to try out for the new toddle bike commercial. You mean they all want to be the kid who rides the toddle bike on TV? Yes. At least their mothers want them to be picked, Janet said, but we can only use one. You mean only one out of all these kids is going to be picked? That's right, Janet said. Who picks him? I asked. Your father and Mr. Denberg are doing it, but of course, Mr. Vincent, the president of Toddle Bike, has to approve. The president of the Toddle Bike Company has to approve. Just then, a door opened and a secretary came out. Next, she called to the waiting kids. My Murray's next, a mother said. Oh, no, he's not, another mother called. Sally is next. Ladies, please, you'll all have a turn, the secretary said. Murray got to, Murray got to be next. All right, got to be next. He was a little redheaded kid. He wasn't in the other room for two minutes when the door opened and a big man with a cigar in his mouth came out and said, no, 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 he shouted. He's not the type at all. Murray was crying. His mother, was ye yell His mother yelled at the big man. What do you know anyway? You would know a treasure if you found one. She shook her fist at him. Janet whispered to me, that's Mr. Vincent, the president of Toddle Bike. Mr. Vincent walked to the center of the room. He looked around at all the kids. When he looked over at us, he pointed and called, there he is. That's the kid I want. I thought he meant me. I got all excited. I could just see myself on TV riding that toddle bike. All my friends would turn on their sets and say, hey, look, there's Peter. While I was thinking about what fun it would be, while I was thinking about what fun it would be, Mr. Vincent came over to us and grabbed Fudge. He lifted him up. Perfect, he cried. He's perfect. And I'm going to stop there. We will see what happens next. Uh, we're going to have a few pages left. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that part. Um, like I said, we have a lot of chapter eight to go and we'll see what happens next time. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Sleep well, sweet dreams, and I will see you next time. Good night, everyone.